Hello students, welcome you to this video. In this video, I am going to teach the MCQs from chapter number 12, Discrete Mathematics. Okay. So, let's move on to the first question. A binary operation on a set S is a function from binary operation. The operation, we call it as binary operation. And the set, we say, it satisfies for closure property. What is the condition? You take two elements from the set operate it, you will get a single element that also belongs to that set, okay? So you take two elements from a set, okay? So that is an ordered pair, S cross S. You take an element, your answer is again in yes. So second option is the correct answer. Subtraction is not a binary operation. Subtraction is not a binary operation. In R is set of real numbers, Z set of integers, N, natural numbers, and Q, rational numbers, right? Subtraction, two real numbers you subtract, again your answer is a real number. Two integers you subtract, again you'll get an integer. Two natural numbers you subtract, for example, two and uh, three. If you subtract two minus three, it is minus one, it is not a natural number. So not a binary operation. Subtraction is not a binary operation in set of natural numbers. Which one of the following is a binary operation on N? Binary operation on N. Take any two natural numbers, operate it. If your answer is again a natural number, you say yes, it is a binary operation. Two natural numbers you subtract, you need not get a natural number, just we saw one, right? Multiplication, two natural numbers you take, multiply, definitely your answer is a natural number only. Okay, so multiplication. Option, uh, next question number four. In a set R of real numbers, R is set of real numbers, star is defined by as follows. Which one of the following is not a binary operation? So to take two elements, operate it, your answer is need not be there. Okay, if your answer is there, then you say it's that it is a binary operation. We have to get not a binary operation. See that A star B is equal to minimum of A comma B. So A star B is minimum of A and B two numbers you are taking and your answer is minimum of that two. So definitely your answer is either A or B only. So okay, satisfies closure property. Second option, A star B is maximum of A comma B. So the greater value you are going to write, right? Among that two, only one answer. But the next one, A star B is equal to A, first number, okay. A B belongs to R, then A star B equal to A, the first number, that also belongs to R. But the net fourth one should be the answer, right? Okay. A star B is equal to A star B is equal to A raised to B. See, suppose I am taking, some cases it may be true. Suppose I am taking, say, minus nine and half. Both are real numbers only, no? Minus 9, comma, half belongs to R. A star B, minus 9, star half is equal to A raised to B. Minus 9, raised to half. Minus 9, raised to half. That is root of minus 9, plus or minus 3i, right? Root is there, plus or minus 9, root is 3, minus is there. So it is a complex number. It is not a real number. So which one is not a binary operation, the fourth one is not a binary operation. Now let's move on to question number five. The operation star is defined by A star B is equal to A B by seven is not a binary operation on, not a binary, read the question very carefully, Q plus positive rational numbers. You take two positive rationals, find A star B, a is a positive rational, B is a positive rational, you multiply, it is a positive rational, divide by 7, it is positive. So, Q plus, it is a binary operation. Z, you see, if you take Z, you take two integers, suppose 2 and 3, 2 integers, what is 2 star 3? 2 into 3 by 7, 6 by 7, it is not an integer, right? It is not in Z. 2 comma 3 belongs to Z, but 2 star 3 not belongs to Z. Okay, so that is your answer. Real number, complex number will satisfy, okay? Now, sum number 6. In a set Q, star, or here circle, A circle B, or A star B can take is equal to A plus B plus AB. For what value of y. So you have to find y value. What is given here? 3 star y star 5 
equal to 7. So you have to find y value, right? See how star is defined here. A star B is A plus B plus AB. Add them plus multiply them. So first term inside the bracket, 3 star. What is y star 5? Add them, y plus 5 plus multiply them, 5y equal to 7. Now this is of the type a star b. All these together b. So a plus b. Add them first. 3 plus y plus 5 plus 5y plus multiply them. 3 into this. So 3y plus 3 into 5 15 plus 3 into 5 15y equal to 7. Group all the y terms together. 15y. What is that? 20, 23, 24y. 15, 20, 23, plus 23 equal to 7. So 24 y equal to 7 minus 23. So 24 y equal to minus 16. y equal to minus 16 by 24. 8 table you cancel minus 2 by 3. Minus 2 by 3 is option number 2. Next question number 7. Star they define like this, a star b equal to root of a square plus b square. Then star is, see what is, what are the property they mentioned here, commutative, associative, only that too, right? So sometimes they said commutative, not associative and all. Okay, let us see both. You check for commutative and associative. Commutative means a star b and b star a, both must be same. How they define star? a star b is equal to root of first term square plus second term square. So A star B. So then what is B star A? Root of first term square plus second term square. Both are same only, no? So A star B is equal to B star A. So commutative property satisfied. Now let us see associative property. A star B star C you find out. A star. How can you find B star C? Root of square of first plus square of second. Now this is of the type a star b this is our b how can you find a star b root of first one square a square plus second one square second one when you square root cancel you get b square plus c square so this is a star b star c next you find a star b star c a star b star c see how to do this first term inside the bracket a star b root of a square plus b square star c now this is like a star b. What is a star b? Root of first one square. This is the first one. If you square root cancel a square plus b square plus second one square. Second one square means it is c square. Are they same? Yes. So a star b star c is equal to a star b star c. So associative property also satisfied. So it is commutative and associative, do you have a choice like this? Both commutative and associative. Now let's move on to question number eight. Which one of the following statement has the truth value t? Truth value t you have to get. Please listen carefully. The first one, sine x is an even function. So not only discrete math, so you need so many other things, right? Sine x is an even function. No, sine x is an odd function because sine minus theta is minus sine theta. Cos theta is even function, okay? So that is false. Every square matrix is non-singular. Every square matrix, no, you cannot say. Determined value zero means it may be it is singular. The product of a complex number and its conjugate is purely imaginary. Product of a complex number a plus i b, the conjugate a minus i b. If you multiply, you will get a square plus b square, right? A square plus so it is purely imaginary. No, it is pure real. So that all which one of the following is true? Uh, all the first three statements are false. Root five is an irrational number. Yes, that is the true. One, right now some number nine listen which one of the following statement has truth value f truth value f here r is given conjunction here it is r r means any one of them is true you say it is true p r q so either p is true or q is true you say the given uh, common statement is true okay chennai is in india yes it is true 
but what we need which are the following statement has the truth value f so here chennai is in india root 2 is an integer false but chennai is in india so totally it is a or is there if and means both that statements must be true then only you can say the common statement is true second one chennai is in india it is true or only no so that also true second third one chennai is in china that is false root 2 is an integer that also false so that statement is has the truth value f and the last one root 2 is an irrational number that is true right so you can't take that one so hope you understood r means any one of the value must be true that's enough and means both must be true right now let's move on to question number 10 if a compound statement involves three simple statements p q r something like that then the number of rows the formula 2 raised to n three statements 2 cube it is not 6 2 cube is what 8 right do carefully question number 11 which one is the inverse statement so please listen very carefully just you want to explain all the three for the statement p implies q conditional statement if p then q then you must know all the three converse of this converse means just to reverse this p implies q you write q implies p that is the converse of this statement p implies q inverse means if not p negation p implies negation q that is inverse of the statement p implies q and the next one is contra positive that is negation q implies negation p if not q then not p okay so here what they asked here which one of the following sorry which one is the inverse of the statements so which statement p join q p join q implies p meet q so this is like our p implies q like this okay so what they asked inverse inverse means this one so negation of the first statement implies negation of the second so negation of the first one p join q implies negation of the second if not p join q then not p meet q right so check whether this option is there negation p join q negation p join q implies negation p meet q no it is not there so nothing else started with negation p join q. so apply de, de morgan's law you know how to use de morgan's law negation of p join q that is a union b the whole bar a bar intersection b bar right so negation p meet negation q implies negation p join the meet become joint negation q check whether this option is there yes that is the fourth option okay so you must know converse inverse and contra positive see the next one here contra positive they asked so for p implies q which one is the contra positive negation q implies negation p okay so for this one right so what do you write actually negation of the second one negation r implies negation of the first p join q negation r implies first one you see but that is not exactly that one but you can change it no so negation r implies apply de morgan's law negation p the join become meet negation q right so the first one is the correct option now let's move on to question number 13 the truth table for p meet q joint negation q please listen carefully so first we want p meet q p meet q for meet what you remember when both are true it is true for join when both are false it is false for conditional true false it is false right by conditional both must be of the same type both are true or both are false then you say it is true right then exclusive or statement er statement just opposite of this right both are true both are false then you have to say what false last column contains only t tautology last column contains only f it is contradiction right so p meet q when both are true it is true right in all other cases you write f p meet q negation q negation q means q just opposite q true become false and false become true right 
So true become false, then false become true, false true. For these two, you have to take join. For join, what's the condition? When both are false, it is false. When both are false, it is false. In all other cases, you write true, right? So you are getting true, true, false, true. Third option, true, true, false, true, right? So that is the correct answer. So just try to remember all these things, then you can answer any question. Question number 14, look at this one. The last column of the truth table for negation, P joint negation Q. Last column they asked, uh, in the last column they asked how many F are there, right? Number of final outcomes of the truth value, F they asked, okay, for this table. So let us prepare the table. So first P, then Q, we want negation Q, then the term inside the bracket, P join negation Q, the negation of this. So whenever you have four rows, two times true, two times false, then true, false, true, false. Negation Q, Q you change, true become false, false become true, false, true. Now for P and negation Q, you take join. For join, what do you remember? When both are false, it is false. When both are false, when both are false, it is false. No other case. In all other places, you put what? True. Now, negation of this, negation of this, so true become false, right? True become false, false become true, true become false. Now, this is the last column. The question is, how many false are there? One, two, three, right? So, your answer is three. Just to prepare a table quickly, and from that you can count, right? Now, question number 15. Listen to the 15th one. Which one of the following is incorrect for any two proposition P and Q? Which one is incorrect? Which one is false? You have to find. Negation P join Q. D Morgan law. Negation P join become meet negation Q. That is the correct one. Negation P meet Q. Negation P join negation Q. That also correct. Negation P join Q. Negation P join. No, it should be meet. So third one is the wrong statement and that is the correct answer for this question, right? And the fourth one is C, two times negation, right? Negation, negation P. It is P only, right? So hope you understood that question number 15. Now let's move on to question number 16. See the 16th question. P, Q given. What they asked? P, meet Q. Implies negation P. So just we continue here itself or you prepare a table here separately. So which one you want? P, meet Q. P, meet Q. Implies. P, meet Q. Implies negation P. Listen carefully. So first you write P, Q, negation P, then P meet Q, then the whole thing, P meet Q implies negation P. So four rows, so you write true, true, false, false. Then true, false, true, false. Negation P, P you change, so true become false, false, true, true, right? Then P meet Q, P meet Q. Meet means when both are true, it is true. Both are true, it is true. In all other cases, you write what? False. Now listen very carefully. P meet Q, this one implies negation P. For negation, sorry, yeah, ne implies negation P. So true, false is false. But you read from here. True, false. True, false is false. You read from here, right? True, false is false. In all other cases, you write what? True. So this is what you are getting. So, see which option is the correct one. False, true, true, true. False, true, 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 right? So, the second option is the correct one. False, true, 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 right? Now, let's move on to question number 17. The dual, dual means what? It's a very simple thing. Just you change meet into join and join into meet. No change in negation. So, the first, the negation remains same. P joined become meet. Meet Q. Then again the joint become meet. Then P joined become meet. In another bracket P 
P, the joint become meet, negation, R. Okay, just to change meet into joint and joint into meet, you will get the fourth option. Now, question number 18. The proposition P meet, negation P meet, negation P join Q is. Please listen very carefully. You can expand it, distribute your law. P meet, negation P, joint P meet Q, right? P meet negation P. This is actually A intersection A bar, like that. A intersection A bar. Nothing is common, right? So empty set. Here, instead of empty set, you write F. Contradiction. So joint P meet Q. So this is like our empty set. Empty set union A, it is A, right? So you are getting P meet Q. So the correct answer is the third one, logically equivalent to P meet Q. Now, question number 19. Determine the truth value of each of the following. Here in between, you can see and. And means both must be true. Both must be true. So, 5 plus 2 is 5. So, totally it's wrong. Uh, second one, 3 plus 2, 5. Yes, it is true. 6 plus 1, 7, right? So, both the statements are uh, right in this case, right? See, determine the truth value of each of the following. So here, 1 plus 2, 4, wrong. So 4, so D, you can see D also correct, right? Determine the truth value of each of the following. Please listen. So the first one is, here there is wrong, right? So the first one is false. Second one, this is true, this is also true, and both are true, so the statement is true. Here, this is true. But this is false, so totally it is false. Here this is true, this is also true, so totally it is what? True. The correct option is false, true, false, true. So first option, right? False, true, false, true. Now question number 20, you see. Which one of the following is not true? Negation of negation is the statement that is true. Which one is not true, we have to find, right? If the last column of the truth table contains only T, then it is a tautology. Yes, that is true. Last column contains only F, it is a contradiction. Yes, that is also true. P and Q are any two statements. Then P, if and only if Q, is a tautology. No, P, Q. P, if and only if Q, biconditional. So how we write here? Here two times true, two times false. Here true, false, true, false. If and only if means when both are of the same type, you write true. All other cases you write what? False. It is not a tautology. La tautology means the last column contains only T, right? But here some F also there, so it is not a tautology. So that is the correct answer because they asked which one of the following is what? Not true. So that is the correct answer for this. Hope you understood all these things. We'll continue in the next video.